Lovely to see all that are gathered with us for the gospel this afternoon. Turn with us, please, to the book of Ephesians, if you have a Bible. Ephesians chapter 1. Verse number 7. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. It's verse number 12. That we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. In whom he also trusted after that he heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. And we look to the Lord for his help as we speak upon his word. We live in a world where everyone wants to talk about what they have. You know, the young, the young person at school, he talks about what he has, you know. At home we have whatever the car is, you know. And his friend's not going to be outdone. And he'll tell the, his friends what, what car his folk have. We have. And, and, uh, and they bum and boast, boast a little, don't they? We have. And they talk about the things we have in our house. And we have in our life. And you say, but adults would hardly do that. No, they, they don't say we have. They just drop it in and passing, you know. They just say things like, uh, if it's a good day, we'll maybe go down to the boat at the weekend. Or, or if the weather's nice, we'll maybe, we'll maybe go to our house down in some other part of the country that we have just for weekends. And, and they just drop it in in passing. Or maybe they'll say, I think if we get a few free days, we'll slip over to our house in Lanzarote and we'll go over there for a few days. They just drop it in. And what they're saying is, we have it. We have it. And if there's something to be had, we have it. Look at us. I was thinking for a few minutes of things that we might have. We have. And when it comes to wealth, everyone can't say we have. Well, when it comes to when it comes to a driving license, you know, everyone can't say we have it because there are many young folk and they haven't reached that age. And unfortunately, there are some and they had it and it's passed by them for whatever reason. Maybe they lost it, and they can't all say we have it. But I was thinking that we could all say we have so. You see, the Bible teaches plainly that God breathed into man's nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. And every one of us could say, we have soul. Maybe I should just emphasize that for a moment. Everyone that is gathered here under the sound of my voice, we are delighted that you've come to hear the word of God and to hear the gospel. But I want to remind each one very kindly and plainly that you and I will exist somewhere forever. See, sometimes people live as if death is the end. I remind you kindly, death is not the end. And each one that is gathered here in this car park will be somewhere forever. And I want you to consider the question, where will it be for me? I was thinking of how that we could all say, we have sins. We have sins. Everyone here. As I look around, I do not know the dear folk who are gathered, but I want to tell each one of you, we have sins. You say, well, we're all very much aware of that, but you know, my sins, my sins aren't as great as my neighbors, and my sins aren't as bad as some other people I know. Well, dear one, listen. The question is not the amount of your sins. The, question, the problem is your sins. My sins, that was the man said in Psalm 51, he says, my sin is ever before me. And I would like to bring before you this fact that we have sins. And the Bible teaches that if our sins are not forgiven, we can never be in heaven. If our sins are not forgiven, then hell will be our doom. And so I would ask the question, dear one, have you ever come to acknowledge before God, I have sins? 
Sin is a real problem and it will keep me out of heaven. But, but in this text that we've just read, the man is not talking about just the fact that he has sins. No, he makes a beautiful statement. I love the certainty of it. He says, we have forgiveness of sins. Isn't that marvelous? Here's a man and he personally is speaking about him and other people and he said, we have forgiveness of sins. Do you? As you're gathered here to listen, we're delighted that you've taken the time and gathered here. But I want to ask the question, do you have the forgiveness of sins? You say, that's very presumptuous. Oh, how could you ever know that you have the forgiveness of sins? You can only ever hope to be forgiven. And, and surely you can just have to wait till you die to see if you've been forgiven. No, that's the thinking of man. That's the thinking of religion. That's the thinking of people today. They think you'll have to wait and see. But we turn to the word of God, the Bible. And we ask, what does God say? And we have the example given of a man and he doesn't say we hope to have the forgiveness of sins we dream of having the forgiveness of sins maybe someday we have the forgiveness of sins he says we have a present possession we have the forgiveness of sins and so i can be absolutely sure that it's possible for people to know they're going to heaven to know their sins are forgiven. To know they'll never face their sins again. To know they'll never be in hell. To know heaven is my home. We have the forgiveness of sins. You say, how is it possible? How is it possible? Sinners don't deserve to be in heaven. In our sins we ought to be punished. You say, how is it possible for people to have their sins that block heaven taken away? How is it possible to have the forgiveness of sins? Well, the Bible tells us. It says, by his blood. That's it. That's why we can have the forgiveness of sins. By his blood. Or just in this text, through his blood. That's important. His blood. You say, what does it mean, his blood? Who's the he? Well, it's talking about the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the one that came from heaven to earth and went to the cross. And there upon a cross, he was nailed by his hands and by his feet. And as this text speaks about his blood, it's speaking about the fact that Jesus Christ entered into death. He died. Time and again, you'll get the term, the blood of Christ. And we have it again in, in John. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanseth from all sin. And when it's speaking about the blood of Jesus Christ, it's not just speaking about his physical hands, nail, and physical blood that came from his precious body. But it's speaking about the fact that the one that was on the cross, he entered into death. And when the Bible speaks about the shedding of blood, it's speaking about death. And so when this is talking about the reason people can have the forgiveness of sins is through his blood. It's stating that it's because of the death of Jesus Christ. Our brother that was praying just as we began, he was speaking about the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And the reason people can have the forgiveness of sins is because the Son of God died on the cross. He was buried. On the third day he rose again. And the one that is now alive in heaven, he is able to make people sure of heaven. He is able to secure people for eternity. And that's why this text says, it's through his blood, through his death, through his suffering. Not only did he die, not only did he physically suffer, but on the cross, the Bible teaches that God laid upon his own son the iniquity of us all. And the Lord Jesus there on the cross was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was on him that you could be healed. Dear one, you could be healed, you could be forgiven, you could have this forgiveness of sins 
before you leave the car park today, all because of his blood, his death, his death is enough to cleanse any or indeed every sinner under the sound of my voice. But I want you to emphasize one thing as you dear folk listen. One thing about it is it's his blood. His blood. And you might ask the question, why did it have to be his blood? Why could there not be someone else who would shed their blood? Why can the preacher that comes here, could he not die in my stead, in my place? Could he not take my place? Could there not have been some other creature take my place? Maybe there's someone else in this town and you think they could take your place. Why his blood? Well, dear one, he was the only one that ever walked on earth that did not sin. He was the only one that walked on earth that could not sin. And so when he died, when he shed his precious blood, he was able to die for our sins. For our sins. Because he had absolutely none of his own. And the one that had no sin of his own, he suffered for my sins. I want to tell you, dear one, he died that your sins could be forgiven. Now there's a little hymn in this book before me and it says, There was one who was willing to die in my stead, that a soul so unworthy might live. And the path to the cross, he was willing to tread all the sins of my life to forgive. He was nailed to the cross. He was nailed to the cross. Oh, how much he was willing to bear with what anguish and loss. Jesus went to the cross. All my sins. We're all dead on him there. And here one of the reason people can have the forgiveness of sins is because of his blood. Through his blood. Now the question is, do you have the forgiveness of sins? Have you ever personally trusted in Jesus Christ to be your saviour? Do you have the guarantee of heaven? You see, People say, well, how does it all work? How does it all work? You're telling me there are people and they have the forgiveness of sins. And, and you say, it's all through the precious blood of the Lord Jesus by his death. You see, how does it all go together? How do you get the link? Well, actually, this passage tells us about it. And as this man is writing, he's speaking about these people and he says, this is how it happened. This is how that you who were in your sins on the way to hell are now on the way to heaven because you have the forgiveness of sins. He says, the first part was you heard the word of God. You heard. We have read that. You heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. He says, you heard it. I'm glad that you folk have heard it. This is maybe not the first night you've heard it, but you hear it tonight. Hear of how you can have your sins forgiven. And if you're going to be in heaven, you must have your sins forgiven. That's the message of the gospel. Through the death of the Lord Jesus alone. And they heard. He says, was that it? Did they go in the way rejoicing? No, no. No, no. He says, they heard. And then it says, you trusted. That's what we have there. In whom ye also trusted. There was a time when they first trusted in Christ. It says here, who first trusted in Christ. And so Jesus Christ, he shed his precious blood on the cross. He died that sinners could be forgiven. But there must be a time when sinners first trust in Christ to be their saviour. There's a time when they first put their dependence alone on the man that died on the cross for their sins. And having depended on him alone for the forgiveness of their sins, they enjoyed trusting him the rest of their life. That's it. He says, there was a time when you first trusted. And he says, you heard it. You trusted Christ. You say, what's the result? He says, you were saved. I think that's a very important thing. It's not that people trust. And when they trust, they're saved. And if they stop trusting, they lose this salvation thing. No, no. No, this is something you get once. And you have it forever. 
This is something you get by trusting in Christ. And the moment you trust in Christ, you're secure eternally. That's why he says, you trusted after you heard, and he says, you were sealed. You see, God doesn't miss anything in his word. Time and time again in the scriptures, God gives us the detail we need. People say, you could be saved and lost. You could be saved today and lost tomorrow. No, no, God says, listen to my word. He first trusted, you were saved. Absolutely secure. And we can turn to the word of God. And those that trust in Jesus Christ, they're secure eternally. And so we have the forgiveness of sin. Do you? If you trust in Jesus Christ, if you rest in the man that died on the cross for your sins, and you rest in him alone for the salvation of your soul, you'll be able to say, I'm saved. I'm satisfied. Heaven is going to be my home. You know, the problem is, far too many people, they feel they're on the way to heaven. You see, there's a man called Samuel Adams. He was a student of Harvard University. Today is the 27th of September. Back in the year 1722 was his birthday. He was involved in the American Revolution. We're not going into details about him. Suffice to mention, he made this statement. He said, Mankind are governed more by their feelings than by reason. I thought, how true. How true. Humanity, mankind, they are so ruled by how they feel. I meet someone and I say, Well, are you going to heaven? They say, well, I hope so. I feel I've done enough. Huh? Where do you get that in the Bible? No, no. It's not about what you feel, dear one. I speak kindly. I'm not trying to be in any way rude to you. But people are governed by how they feel. And when life is over, you'll not be back to change your destination. And you leave life with your sins not forgiven, and you end in hell. There'll be no hope and no hope forever. And that's why it is unwise to be ruled by whether you feel you're going to heaven or whether you feel you're saved or whether you feel you're going to be all right. So many people say, I, I, I just feel I'll be okay. I feel when it's all, listen to you, forget the feeling. Because you might feel up today. You might feel down tomorrow. Salvation is not governed or decided by your feelings. Feelings come and feelings go. But feelings are deceiving. I can trust the word of God. That's something I can depend on and believe in. Put my absolute confidence in the truth of God. And so as we would reason, what does the Bible say? The Bible says all have sinned. And no matter how good I feel, and no matter how good I feel I've been to my neighbours, I am a sinner. And I need not the hope that maybe my sins will be forgiven. No, no. I need the guarantee my sins are gone. My soul is saved. Heaven is my eternal home. Well, I'm going to conclude just, just in the week that has passed. I was speaking to a gentleman, actually speaking to him a couple of weeks before that, in Westmeath. And... Uh, I was chatting to him just out behind his house and uh, he said to me, he says, you know, he says, you're only a boy. I said, you're right. <laughs> he says, see the table, he says here, he says, he says, you're just about here. You're just about here. He says, but I'm over here. Just at the very edge. And he says, I'm just about to go over the edge. That was solemn, wasn't it? What he maybe didn't fully grasp is that I could be gone before him. And you could be gone before him. But he spoke about how he was just about to go over the edge. And he quoted a poem. He said, you've seen it in the gravestone, haven't you? He said, stand and view the place I lie. Where you are now, so once was I. Where I am now, then you shall be. So be prepared to follow me. I smiled to myself. 
I could have taken them to Pertumna, South Galway, to, to a graveyard, and there those words are inscribed. And so as I listened to him speaking about the nearness of death, I said to him, I said, you know, the poet wrote a few more words than that. Another poet wrote word. I said, the words are these. To follow you, I'm not content. Unless I know the way you went. You see, it's one thing to know that I'm going to die. But the question is, where will I be? when I die. Where am I going? And what we try to emphasize, dear one, is you will leave life. And if you have the forgiveness of sins, if you be like the man that we've read of that says, we have the forgiveness of sins, it will be heaven. And I'll follow you there. I'll follow you there because there was a time in life when I trusted Christ. My soul was saved. My eternal destiny is settled. But if you die, dear one, not saved, without this great forgiveness of sin, hell, eternal hell, will be your doom. And so I would encourage each dear one that has gathered time will be gone. Each one that is gathered to ask themselves the question, where will I be <coughs> when I die? Do I have the forgiveness of sin? If I don't, I could have it this very afternoon through his blood. You see, how do I get it? Trusting in Christ depending on the one that suffered for your sins on the cross, that you could be forgiven. Thank you for your very kind attention to the word of God.